literally verse and, and literally uh, understanding it and not understanding the whole mystery. So here there is something which is quite important to be in Rome and you know for the last uh, uh, two decades have been working at the grassroots level, you know, workshops, training women and, and having new leadership here. Once again, not against men and not against uh, you know, Islamic principles, quite the opposite, in the name of these principles to be able to promote that. And then it's a step by step, there are priorities. And I would say that one priority, contrary to what we think, one of the priorities is really to work in the mosques. You know, to get access to the mosque. And when you have access to the mosque, uh, the space, the uh, clean, you know, the, 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 the place to be clean, the, 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 the mic to work, uh, to be part of the process of having, you know, to be part of the administration, to be part of the leadership, it's something which is important. And what is happening in home, at home, what is happening within the family, really to train people, because as I'm always saying, the problem of women in Islam is men. <laughs> Not only in Islam, by the way, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, this is the very superficial understanding, the very macho attitude, the very patriarchal understanding, and, and saying, oh, this is the way I saw my father do it. No, it's not because your father or your mother were doing it. They were from a very specific culture. They may be, have been you know, very good Muslim, very sincere, but it doesn't mean that this was the only right answer when it comes to this. And it was maybe a cultural answer, not the Islamic one. And I think that this is a very important one. So I took time with this because I think that in public life, when it comes to education, when it comes to be committed to our uh, in the society, it's very important to have women that are visible, to speak for themselves, that are autonomous. You wear a headscarf, you don't wear a headscarf, you are a practicing Muslim or not, you have your principles, you have your freedom, but you speak. And you speak with respect, you speak with autonomy, and, and with something which is challenging also understanding within the community. Uh, about secularism and the root of the, uh, Islam, be very clear on what I'm saying. What, and by the way, it's something also that we find in philosophy and, and, and philosophy of thought. What I'm saying is that the principle that we find if we are true for, uh, to secularism, it's distinguishing authority. It's the way we are dealing with religious affairs. It's different from the way we are dealing with public affairs. And in fact, if you come to the very classical tradition, in the Sunni and the Shia tradition alike, you will find that the methodology that the Muslims were using when it comes to and the two fields of al-Aqidah and the ibadah, the creed and the uh, five pillars of Islam when it comes to practicing. In this methodology, what they are saying, and look, because we are dealing about here, and we are talking here about the authority of the text, they are saying, in this, you can do but what the text is saying. You can't come with your personal interpretation. Meaning by this, that the authority of the text in the Ibadat is absolute. And when it comes to prohibition or, uh, or, or obligation, the text is clear. So the authority of the text is telling you no discussion on this, you cannot come and say there, is, there are six prayers a day tomorrow. Why? Because the texts are speaking. And this is why the, 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 the scholars, and this is why there is a philosophy of law in what the scholars and fuqaha are doing. Contrary to what we are saying, are the philosophers are only philosophers. No, there is philosophy in law. There is philosophy here that has to do with the, the whole understanding. So they were saying, la ishtihada ma'al nas. No critical thinking or interpretation when the text is clear cut. And we are talking here about clear cut text when we are talking about principles of Islam. But now when you come to what they were saying from the very beginning, when it comes to mu'amalat and social affairs, the methodology is exactly the opposite. Everything is possible as long as you don't come with something which is telling me it's forbidden. So here I can do but what the text is saying, here I can do whatever I want as long as you don't tell me this is forbidden. So the methodology is, is very open to rationality, constructive, creative thinking. 
Why? Because everything is is al aslu fil ashya al ibah. It's exactly opposite of this methodology, meaning the principles and everything is permission. Because in Islam we don't have anything which has to do with you know a uh, sense of guilt and, and this is uh, uh, no open open go ahead it's open if someone is telling you to stop because he has to prove you that this is not possible so you have have all the Canadian drinks here all the Canadian drinks and there is one bottle of wine at the end everything is possible except this one why because there is a text saying wine is wrong but everything else is open freely go ahead what does it mean the authority here is open not to the text, but to interpretations, and the limits are known. So here you have a, distinguish, a distinction of authority. And when you say that there is a distinction, we are saying that, for example, yes, we have principles in Islam thinking about a political system, but the authority of the text on the political system are not at all as the religious principles that are imposed from on high. Here they are discussed, they are talked about, they are to be thought about. Very important point. This is why Alain de Libera, a French philosopher, talking about the philosophers in Spain, was saying, in fact, is when Christianity encountered Islam that they started to think about a secular way of dealing with two authorities. Exactly the opposite of what we are saying now. Good point. Good point, why? Because we come here to the roots of the legal tradition and not only a superficial understanding that when people are saying religion and politics is all the same, Muslims are saying, yes, the source is the same, not the methodology. Not the way we deal with authority. Not the way we deal with the system. Here, there's something which is, you pray the way the prophet was praying because there is a text. But here, there is no system. There is no political system. So you need to find the right political system for your time because there is nothing written on this. Everything is possible as long as you respect the principles. What does it mean to authority? An accepted two fields. And this is as old as Islam if you understand the very meaning of this legal tradition. So I don't have a problem if secularism is meaning this, but if it starts to be an ideology and mixing up everything and telling me the only right principles are rational principles and not right principles that are coming, this is wrong. This is a projection, an ideological projection onto a system. And we also have to be very, very cautious because when you come to Muslims today, they are confusing between the two. They are taking the old models for the models that we have to duplicate today. They say the shura of the Medina, this is what we can, we should. If you were to implement what was done in Medina in the seventh century, now only in your town here it would be impossible. Because the world is much more complex. Everything is, is your city is connected to all the world now with the communication. So you cannot just come, this is it. This is a very superficial understanding. So this is a point that we can discuss, but at least this is the trend of the, the, the thought. But I, I want to thank you for, for coming from uh, 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 Toronto and, and, and being with us here today. Uh, and I think that what you are saying is very important, is that there are two things that are important. What the Muslims are experiencing is not new. And it's not specific, it's not all oh, we, it's all, uh, no, it's not new. Many things that we are, you know, very often in, in Europe, for example, I'm saying to the people, you know what? When I was coming to read what was said about the Jews in the 30s, the 40s, and what he said about me, for example, now as a Muslim intellectual in Europe, I've heard it before. Double toad, uh, uh, international connections, uh, double loyalty, you are here but you are there, you're not. This is the way they started anything which has to do with, you know, targeting the Jews in the 30s and the 40s. So it's not new. The point, and this is why I completely agree with you, that we have to learn, that we have to talk and to know each other, the experiences, and, and to come to a, a better understanding of how do we deal with this society. There is only one thing which may be new, and this is why we, it's, it's adding to the fact that we have to work together is the scale. In fact, for the first time, it's perceived as a transnational phenomenon. Yesterday, you were talking about Pakistani or Turkish people or Arabs coming to Canada. Now we are talking about Muslims. And then in Europe, Muslims. 